Okay, I'm going to start by reading um, a poem by William Stafford called The Way It Is. There is a thread you follow. It goes among things that change, but it doesn't change. People wonder about what you are pursuing. You have to explain about the thread, but it is hard for others to see. While you hold it, you can't get lost. Tragedies happen, people get hurt or die, and you suffer and get old. Nothing you do can stop times unfolding. You never let go of the thread. So I really love this, this reading, this poem. Um, which you may you may have heard it before. It does it does come up on retreats, and um, when I first heard it, it, it kind of chimed with me in terms of this the, the thread. What was the thread I was following? And um, when I first came across True Atma, it definitely had the sense of a homecoming. And a lot, a lot of people say that about uh, meeting the Dharma, meeting Buddhism, and meeting Triratna in particular, which has such a strong sense of Sangha. And I was very much attracted to the community, but it was the Dharma jewel that shone most brightly for me when I met Triratna. And um, I just really felt like the order members that I was encountering um, through the teachings of the Buddha were articulating something that I knew uh, like deeply in my being to be true, but I'd never had the words to kind of express before. And um, so those, those kind of dharmic truths that particularly spoke to me uh, early on in, in my encounter with Triratna were, were like the teaching of impermanence and that everything is always changing, unfolding, and that there's nothing fixed. And then in the in the midst of all that is just how uh, inextric inextricably interconnected we all are. So I really felt like in hearing those those teachings, like my whole being had this kind of like yes response. And um, as I got kind of more involved uh, with with them, um, uh, Buddhism, it began to emerge as I kind of develop more self-awareness and um, <laughs> kind of re like reflecting on on my life uh, and what had brought me to that that point was was something of this thread of my time in in nature and because yeah so me coming to the Dharma was it was a curiosity um, that brought me to to the Buddhist Center it was in Cambridge at the time and um, I had no idea that I was seeking something. <laughs> there was no kind of like conscious seeking, but when I, when I met it, it was like, oh, I've been looking for this. I'd really been looking for this. And I think how it had been playing out in my life before that was through um, me heading out into the, into the wild. So I'm just going to share a bit about my kind of journey of, of doing that and how it how it kind of looked like before and after meeting the Dharma and the kind of qualities that I was like looking to experience through my connection uh, with the outdoors. So one the the kind of first first like strong memory I have of this uh, and there's other things. Oh, I also just want to say. Um, I grew up in a in a working class town called Wakefield in West Yorkshire, um, but I, my parents loved and still love um, the wild, <laughs> and so I was uh, I'm really kind of grateful for them and recognise my privilege in having them take me out camping and particularly wild camping uh, throughout my childhood because that's one of the the first memories that I want to share with you, and um, yeah, I just want to acknowledge my kind of privilege in having access to that because uh, one of the, yeah, the first thing was 
a wild camping trip with my mom and dad. I've got two siblings, but they were off doing other, other things. And when I was 15, we went up to the very northwest of Scotland to Cape Wrath. And I remember one particular bay called Caveig where there's a, there's a wee bothy and just sat out on the rocks there and just sat there for quite a long time, just watching, watching the waves and listening to the waves crashing um, on the rocks coming in, in and out. And that kind of just state of um, peace and contentment and like ease that Abby was mm. talking about. Uh, and it was just a very beautiful time of my life that I, rem I remember very clearly. And it's the, sim the simplicity of that memory as well. <laughs> I was going to compare it to the Buddha under the rose apple tree. I guess there's something of that quality. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> the Arctic Ocean crashes in over the rocks. <laughs> there's something of, of that quality of just kind of entering a, a very relaxed state of mind. I didn't then go on to gain enlightenment, <laughs> sadly. Um, and then I kind of went on, I, I, I went to study geology at university and part of the draw to do that was all the field trips and the wonderful places that I got to go and explore. And one of the places I got to go to was um, the Atlantic Ocean. <laughs> so there's a water theme emerging here. Mm. Um, and I got to spend uh, two, like two separate months, so a month at a time out on a, on a research vessel on, on the Atlantic Ocean just south of Iceland. And I really, um, yeah, one of the, the things I loved to do on the boat was to lie out on the deck and I could put my head over the edge and look down at the water. And there was such a draw to jump. And there was absolutely no mm. way I would have jumped because I knew that was like <laughs> going to not end, <laughs> end well. <laughs> but like the, that real kind of um, draw to be immersed in, in the vastness of things. Mm. is is one of the real callings for me in this is to enter into big landscapes where i kind of uh kind of shrink but in like the most positive sense possible it's not a diminishing of of who i am but it's a stepping into the whole of kind of taking my place within um the, the vastness of things and the mystery of it. So there was a real compul compulsion to jump into the water because I kind of just didn't want to be separate. It was kind of that sense of being on the boat where I was just a bit too separate. And that's what I love about wild swimming. It's that like immersive experience where the boundaries start to blur between um, earth, sky, water and, and me. So it's that stepping into that in interconnectedness as fully as possible. And then shortly be before I met the Dharma, I was fortunate to go during my PhD to the Libyan desert, to the Sahara desert. And that was a, that was a very different quality of, ex of experience. Um, <laughs> dry? Dry, hot. <laughs> <laughs> but I think like a motor vehicle is like evoking that sense of like impermanence mm. can be so strong when we turn our minds to it when we're outdoors. And that felt so acute in the desert. Mm. Um, the fragility of our existence, our kind of human existence, especially when you step into an environment where that humans aren't designed to inhabit. <laughs> I felt very um, aware uh, of my own mortality in those in those situations, and also just like the, the beauty of the the desert sky. So again, it's so the qualities that I could draw out of these experiences as I kind of looked back at this thread um were, were ones of like vastness and wonder and taking my seat within the kind of play of life within the dance of life mm. and within all that there's a real self-surrender um and i think it these environments allow us to let go that's kind of what mm. i'm drawn to is i can just see that my um futile attempts to control my life are, are futile <laughs> <laughs> and that we can't, we can't control it all we can't control it all so that kind of preciousness of, of human life it c comes to the fore when i'm when i'm out mm. in these in these big environments and that's kind of what drew me out of the city really and like to come and, and live at dana kosher is to be able to um kind of access that that 
big, big outside. Abby talks about this, the big outside reflecting a big in, inside, mm. um, which, I, which mm. I really like. And I think about that as in going beyond the four walls of experience. And since I met the Dharma, that surrender comes with a sense of uh, going for refuge to the three jewels. And so just one more experience I'll share with you, which is actually shortly after my first retreat at Dharna Kosha, I went to um, climb some of the Munros at the end of the Glen, and I was up on top of this hill and the, the rain had come in, the wind was howling, uh, I nearly lost my down jacket to the wind, you know, when you're scrabbling to put, put your clothes on. And um, well, at that point, all I felt I could do was just chant the refuges and precepts. <laughs> just like, oh, okay. I kind of give myself up to, to something bigger. And, and that is, um, yeah, the, these truths, this truth mm -hmm. of imperience is a manifestation of the, the Dharma and our interconnectedness. And just one, one last thing. Um, or two kind of points within that is it's a real freedom to step out of our kind of lives and it's that freedom of mind that abby mm. was saying um in the introduction kind of when we step outside our familiar environment we kind of have choice to be different which it's sometimes hard to mm. find those gaps of freedom in our everyday in our everyday lives is in our normal environment mm. and that's that's the real call for me is that i feel like I can access different parts of myself where I'm more able to like scream or dance and like kind of um, <laughs> run down the hill at what I call my like mountain goat um, behavior. <laughs> where I just feel this real kind of like liberation of, of being that there's a real joy in and stepping into kind of unfathomable mystery where your imagination can can open. And that's that's the call of the wild for me. Mm. Great. 